Joining us now is Jennifer Hammondy, the chair of the National Transportation Safety Board, which, of course, has oversight over rail safety and safety and all these other uh, transportation modes. So can you bring us up to date on how... Well, let's talk about Northwick Southern as a company, mm -hmm. because there are so many derailments. Is it just that we're noticing this more because of the focus on East Palestine? Even in events like today's in Alabama, where there may not have been any injuries or any, you know, hazmat. Involved. Well, uh, train accidents overall are going up. On mainline track, where the East Palestine derailment occurred, they are going down. Uh, but in rail yards, they're going up pretty significantly, which does really raise the concern about worker safety. But regardless of all the uh, accident statistics, it just takes one. One accident like this to really devastate a community, which is why we need to be vigilant when it comes to rail safety. And why, why the increase in rail accidents in, in the freight rails? Um, is this because of the age of the rails, the age of the cars, lack of inspections? It, it's difficult to compare. When we do an investigation, uh, there are not... Uh, sometimes there are similar contributing factors, sometimes there are not. So we try not to compare. But with this one, we're looking at, within a pretty short period of time, uh, five accidents involving Norfolk Southern that we're now investigating, and then we're going to take a look at the one that we did not investigate from Sandusky, Ohio, bringing it to six. And then we're going to do an overall review of the safety culture and organizational practices within Norfolk Southern. What more do we know about East Palestine? Speaking of the most serious, obviously. Well, for East Palestine, we know for a fact that the derailment occurred on rail car number 23 and that it was due to an overheated rail bearing. The what comes to us pretty quickly. It's how did we get to the point where a wheel bearing was run to failure? How did we get there? What decision making? What management practices? What management policies? And so that's what we're really digging into now. We're also doing testing on the pressure relief valves for the uh, five vinyl chloride tank cars to see how they were performing uh, while the fire was ensuing. And uh, uh, one thing we do want to look at is the performance of the tank cars overall. What about crew involvement, crew practices and training? Well, for this one, the crew, we have no reason to believe the crew did anything wrong. We have no evidence of that. Uh, in fact, once the derailment occurred, they were already breaking when the derailment occurred, and uh, they uh, disconnected or uncoupled the locomotive from the rest of the cars and moved their locomotive up about a mile, which was in accordance with policy. Uh, what we do want to look at is what is going on in Norfolk Southern with respect to inspection and maintenance of the rail cars. And it, does any of this relate to cost-cutting uh, layoffs or other things that are perhaps indicated by the economy but aren't in the best interests of, you know, community safety? It could. It, it could very well uh, include some cost-cutting and having workers that are doing more with less, which is part of why we want to look at the safety culture within the railroad. What about the commitments that Alan Shaw says he's personally making to that community to be with them for the long term? Their obvious concerns are the kinds of things that we've seen from the burn pits, what we saw from the 9-11, you know, relief, the first responders. Mm -hmm. But years later, they're suffering from terrible uh, cancers and other mm -hmm. diseases, lung diseases, non-cancer lung disease that, you know, that are fatal, that are expensive, that are heartbreaking. Well, the company has to be there for that community. That's what's most important right now is the health and wellness of that community. What we often don't talk about is beyond just the physical injuries and uh, uh, concerns with pets and their safety and uh, concerns about jobs uh, being lost due to illnesses. We don't talk a lot about the mental health aspect and just how devastating seeing something like that and experiencing it is. Uh, experiencing that is. It can be very devastating. So that company has to be there for the long term for uh, that community. And why so many incidents in this company? I mean, you're taking a closer look at that. What about the other companies? Is this company an outlier? 
Well, uh, we still have to look at the other companies. It, it's interesting because I was looking at uh, the three major freight railroads that are operating in Ohio right now, Canadian National, which has some track, uh, very limited, CSX and Norfolk Southern. CSX operates twice as much uh, track as Norfolk Southern, but Norfolk Southern has a higher accident rate per thousand miles of track. And so we're going to have to take that into account as part of our investigations. And how long is this investigation, do you think? Over uh, the course of uh, a year to maximum 18 months, we will dig in very deeply into the company and their practices. But we're also going to have a pretty rare investigative hearing in East Palestine, Ohio, uh, in the June time frame. And any time during the investigation we can issue urgent safety recommendations and will not hesitate to do that. And, and finally, your own agency, do you have enough regulations? Do you have enough person power? You know, wh well, what are you facing? Uh, what we're facing is a, a pretty big shortage of staff for investigations. We sent uh, 10 or 11 investigators, 10 to 11 investigators to this, to just to East Palestine, which combined are managing 38 major investigations alone. We need additional resources, and I'm hopeful that we'll get that out of the president's budget today uh, so that we can hire more personnel and provide them with the training they need so that we can succeed in our mission of safety. Well, thank you so much for taking time from your busy schedule, and thank we hope you'll be in touch with updates as this goes on. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. No, our pleasure.